Welcome to Hoffman Photography. My name is Rainer. I'm a photographer and photo instructor. In my video about the classic landscape technique, link is in the description, I mentioned the hyperfocal distance. But I didn't explain what it is. So here is the explanation. The hyperfocal distance is important whenever you want depth of field from close to the camera out to infinity. Here is the definition of the hyperfocal distance. The hyperfocal distance is the closest distance at which a lens can be focused while keeping objects at infinity acceptably sharp. When the lens is focused at this distance, all objects at distances from half of the hyperfocal distance out to infinity will be acceptably sharp. If that sounds a bit confusing, here is an illustration that should make things clear. If you focus on the hyperfocal distance, let's say that is a distance from the camera to the red person, then the image is acceptably sharp from half the hyperfocal distance out to infinity, here shown as the green arrow. And that is, of course, the depth of field. Now, the hyperfocal distance isn't just a fixed distance from the camera. That would be too simple. But before we get to that point, let me get something out of the way first. By now, you've heard or read the phrase objects appear acceptably sharp several times. And you may ask yourself, what does acceptably sharp actually mean? Well, that's a very long story and way beyond the scope of this video. The very, very simplified explanation goes like this. Imagine a very small dot. As long as this dot is located exactly in focus distance, it will appear as a very small dot in the image. However, if this dot is closer to the camera or farther from the camera than the focus distance, it will appear as a small disk in the image. Google circle of confusion. Now, the closer to the camera or the farther from the camera the dot is located, the larger the diameter will become. If this diameter exceeds a certain diameter, then our eyes will perceive the dot as out of focus or not really sharp. As long as the diameter is smaller than this critical diameter, it will the dot will be acceptably sharp. There's much more to it, but this is the essence. Now, what determines the hyperfocal distance? There are three factors. The f-stop or the diameter of the aperture, the focal length of the lens, and the film or sensor size. There is some mass involved to determine the hyperfocal distance from these three parameters. Unfortunately, you can't do the mass in your head. Well, I can't anyway. But there's hope. There are printed tables that give the hyperfocal distance for various f-stops and for various focal lengths. But that is so 20th century. Of course, these days there are smartphone apps available to calculate the hyperfocal distance. Ain't that great? Well, in my humble opinion, it's just cumbersome to use tables or smartphone apps when you're out in the field taking images. In the days before autofocus, it was that simple to determine the hyperfocal distance. Have a look. This is a 50mm lens from the 1950s. Before we got autofocus, all lenses, well, at least all prime lenses, had a depth of field indicator. This ring here. The f-stop numbers are plotted to the left and to the right of the red distance mark. If you used, let's say, f11 and you wanted maximum depth of field out to infinity, you simply rotated the focus ring so that the infinity symbol is opposite the aperture number, f11 in our case. Then the red distance mark points to 5 meters and that is, you guessed it, the hyperfocal distance. The depth of field then begins at half the hyperfocal distance, and that is, of course, 2.5 meters. 
Brilliant, isn't it? Alas, most modern lenses don't have depth of field indicators anymore. So we do have to use tables or smartphone apps. Or do we? No, we don't. There is a rule of thumb that works quite well for short focal lenses of say 24 mm or less and for large f-stop numbers, let's say f11 or larger, if you aren't overly pedantic. Here is the rule of thumb. For MFT cameras, simply divide the focal length by 10. For example, 16 divided by 10 equals 1.6 and the result is in meters. For full frame cameras, divide the focal length by 10 and then by 2. For example, 16 divided by 10 equals 1.6 and 1.6 divided by 2 equals 0.8 and again the result is in meters. For APS-C cameras, the hyperfocal distance is halfway between MFT and full frame. That's 1.2 meters in our example. As I said, it's a rule of thumb. So let's see how well it works. For a focal length of 16 millimeters at f11, the rule of thumb is spot on for full frame and MFT cameras and still very good for APS-C cameras. At f16, the rule of thumb is slightly off, but it's still quite close. For a focal length of 24 mm at f11, the rule of thumb doesn't work quite so well, but for practical purposes, it's not too bad. At f16, we have again almost a perfect match between the rule of thumb values and the calculated values. If you are a purist, you probably won't like this rule of thumb. But for me it's good enough. And here's a reason why it's good enough for me. This is the distance scale of a modern wide angle lens. Now try to set the distance manually to say 2.85 meters. Well, it's guesswork at best. I use this rule of thumb a lot, even if it's not perfect. So give it a try. But remember, it works only for short focal lengths and large f-stop numbers. Thanks for watching and as always, stay tuned.